Okay. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Larry. You're the only one I can see until I change this, so. Katie, how's the heat? How's the heat? Well, it was supposed to be mid 70s to high 70s, but right now it's like just barely 70. So I don't know. You're kidding. Our deserts kidding. are in triple triple digit, digits. Okay. So, uh, yeah. That's one of the four uh, weather reports we get here. <laughs> I saw the um, weather report last night for your area, and it was like, yikesy. Yeah, uh, mountains and desert get uh, high temps, and then the mountains get the low temps, too. So, okay. and right now, uh, wildfire season evidently has started. There's one in Central California again. That's a big yep. one. And then there's one down here in San Diego that's also on the other side of the border. So, last oh, I heard, uh it was like 70% contained. Oh, that's good. Yeah, well, it's been burning for a couple of days. Yeah. Oh, geez. Well, Oscar, how are you? You were fabulous. <sighs> Nothing to complain. Excellent. Now, do I believe you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, she should believe me. Nothing to complain in the personal um, level. It's always a good bet that Oscar will have something to complain about. <laughs> how, about well, how about how was 57th Street? Uh, disappointed is it's the only word that I can use. It did rain, it did rain all Saturday doing show hours. It didn't rain for setup, but it started raining at just outside 11 or 10 to start raining. Then it stopped until almost seven o'clock at night. And I managed to sell a couple of prints, but nothing special. And then on Sunday, the crowd was out, but it was not a buying crowd. Uh, so, you know, I saw a lot of prints, but not enough to justify doing the show. Well, that's a shame. I really, it's the second year in a row that the show has, has not performed to what I was used to or after COVID. And it's been hard to deal with it, but um, it took all animators, all, all benefits of doing the show, like the little things, there's no coffee, there's no breakfast. They, you basically have to go to the store and get coffee in the coffee shop, which is fine. But you basically don't have nothing for you to do in there. And uh, they still keep a t-shirt, which is nice, and a bag with water and apples. So, but there's no coffee or anything like that. The other thing is, uh, since alumni weekend doesn't go any anymore, same time the graduation. Uh, if you you use, I think if you lose Saturday, the show goes downhill because you are depending on the local people only. On Sunday, most of the time, there's some trigger here and there, and the demographics are changing. And it's, it's not that the people don't have the money, but I don't think it's the people that we make art for, if that makes sense. It's mostly, it's becoming more ethnic work with people buying or Chicago stuff. But other than that, you know, the show is a little disorganized. And some things, but it's because they keep changing volunteers. I got to see if I can get into the board and see if I can help them, but I don't know for sure. 
how to go about it. And um and they getting I really, really started thinking honestly that the shows need to require every single artist to have insurance at the show. And I really think that uh I know it sounds bad but they should know a lot of pop up tents in the shows. Uh, we got lucky that it was just rain, no wind. But people in the, there was people having just 10 pound weights in the tent. And it's not 10 pounds. And in the train line, it's 10 pounds and an easy up. Uh, the person in front, next to me, she didn't have insurance. She had one bracelet, retail value for hundred dollars stolen, but she didn't have insurance neither. Uh, and when I was talking to my friend Julie, she knows her from other shows, and she said she was in shock that she didn't have insurance. And uh, but that's one of the shows that. Uh, I take my time breaking down because people are in a rush to get out of there. And, and as much as they want to keep it organized, the people are just really, really rude and I'll consider to another level because these are not people that I honestly don't see them in the better shows all the time. Uh, at the end of the day, it, it, I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing that if they get into 57, but I don't see them in any other shows, or oh, I'm doing much better than before, or 57 went down the hill. So pick up whatever way you want to take that one out. But it's, uh, uh, would I do it again? Yes, because it's my neighborhood show. Even if I lose money, I will still do it. So, uh, and the funny thing, the people in the board know who I am. And I don't know who the hell any of them are, which is <laughs> pretty sad. <laughs> always a problem. Like I, I mean, uh, they're going to say, oh, watch out. Don't let that guy on the board. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know anybody's name. <laughs> oh, and then they say, like, uh, you live nearby. I said, like, uh, Oh shit! <laughs> so like, where you live exactly by the jewel? Are the one in Cardiff? She's like, yeah, you live really, really close. So like, yeah, that's really nice to have somebody from the neighborhood doing the show. So like, okay. <laughs> well, Crystal, but, I oh, sorry. No. Well, <clears throat> Crystal, I didn't hear how Belleville went for you. Oh, my God. It sucked so bad. <laughs> <clears throat> I see. I didn't even make my booth fee. Holy um, shit. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. Oh, no. and, I, and um, I was next to a photographer who had done the show four times. He did really poorly. Um I didn't get around to a lot of people, but everyone, you know, like everybody I could see from my booth, I talked to. And with the exception of um, a digital arts guy next to me, they all said either they did poorly or that people weren't in a buying meet or something just felt off from other years. And it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of people there. It was also hot as hell. Yeah. But that show just oh. is hot or wet. Yes. And uh, when I did it last year, my impression was that the people that did well are the people that have a traditional, formal look. It's a conser extremely conservative area. That's what I saw walking by. And so that's why I think I didn't do well, but I also did terribly in Summerfair this weekend. 
Um, Lord. Oh my, I had, okay. I was in a bad location to begin with. I was, I didn't realize that they had like crafts there. Um, I was next to a woman who sold these like pre-purchased little girls dresses that she stenciled hearts and flowers on. Oh Lord. Yeah, it was bad. And, you know, not having done the show before, I didn't know what to expect in terms of foot traffic. So in my section, which was way the hell out in green, I thought it was fine because they did open one of the entrances there. So it seemed like we had a decent number of people. But then I went out to take a look at the other areas and it was wall to wall everywhere <laughs> else. <laughs> oh, geez. But I think they just didn't like my art or maybe my style, something about it, they just didn't like. Um, yeah, I made like, a, I not, I didn't make, I sold a whopping $900 there. Oh. So, yeah, I lost money both there and Belleville. Now, did you do Art Birmingham? No, I didn't. <clears throat> okay. I heard, um, it, something seemed a little off there too. I was there on the first day as a customer though. My kids and I went there um, oh. and it was raining and freezing cold <laughs> and there was hardly anybody there. I saw um, I saw Barry, but I didn't talk to him because he was busy talking to other people. And um, I think the weather got a lot better on Sunday. So that was good. Yeah, it was good on Sunday from what I hear. So hopefully things will be better in Kalamazoo. I think I, I don't, I need to find people, I guess, who like more contemporary stuff. Um, and they do in Kalamazoo. It's oh, an arty good. town. That's good. Where is your booth? J5. I'm next, I'm, I'm in one of the middle paths right near the children's sculptures. Okay. Good. Have you been warned about the Duda Parade? No, what's that? <clears throat> At like one o'clock on Saturday, they have kind of a crazy parade down one street and everybody leaves to go see it. I mean, it's right next to the park. <laughs> and when it's over, everybody comes back. But the nice thing is the serious buyers stay around. And it's just, it's really short. Okay. And if nothing else, it gives you a minute to breathe. Yeah. Okay. So I won't freak out if I see everyone <laughs> dispersing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because they don't seem to tell you that it happens unless no. they change something. No, this is the first I'm hearing of it. <laughs> well, it looks like the weather will be good. Yeah, it's not going to be too hot. I, I'm really no. excited about it. I think it's still going to be too warm to bring my cat, so she's going to stay home. Oh. I know. She has long fur, and she just gets overheated easily. Yeah, understandable. Well, um, what I'm hearing recently from the show, I did it forever um, and loved it. Friday seems to be the big selling day now, which is a turnaround from it used to be Saturday. Oh, that's interesting because um, when I talk to other artists who have done this for a while, they usually say don't expect anything on a Friday if there's any sort of like preview night or anything like that. Oh, that's different. A preview night is different than when the show is on Friday. Oh, okay. So For some difference, this one starts at <clears throat> like three. Oh, okay. On Friday, uh, preview nights don't write them off because they can be. Now, Kalamazoo, it's not a preview, but. For shows that have a preview night, like Boston Mills has a preview night, and you give those people some wine and they come around and they buy. That's what happened to me um, at Four Bridges. They had 
they had a preview gala thing and I did really, really well. So it, at least I, ha I had a great show in Chattanooga. And so those are the only three shows I've done. And so at least, you know, when I did terribly in Belleville and then last weekend, at least I'm not taking it super, you know, personally, cause I'm like, well, there's, there's, at least there's people in Chattanooga who like my art. Somebody <laughs> likes it. The other well, thing about the, the preview parties or our, um, you may not sell that night, but people will go around and look and then you will see them later in the weekend and make a sale then. Okay. That's exactly what happens. Oh, baby. Oh. <laughs> and then I typically don't donate to things, but I did once um, at the Woodlands, and they have what they call an art dash. <laughs> and patrons pay $250 to get in. You donate a piece of work that's worth they ask for a piece of work that's worth about $250. And then what they do is they set all the work up in this little area and they do, you know, hors d'oeuvres and drinks. And then all the patrons get a number. And then they go up and they start drawing numbers out of a hat. And the patrons then get to go through um, and pick out a piece of art. How fun. And it is fun. It is interesting. And I donated a piece. And several people wanted it. And I wound up selling everything that I had of that. And that uh, during the show to, to the patrons that didn't get it. <laughs> and... You know, I had like four other copies of it, all bigger, and I sold all of them. And uh, that was about a third, almost half my sales for the weekend. Wow. Wow. That's nice. But I love the way they did that. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was fun. The energy in the room was big. And, you know, they're, the reason... I liked it was because it's not an auction and somebody's not going to walk off with a $250 piece of work for five bucks. Right. You know, they're, they're putting in, they're making a donation of $250. I'm making a donation of $250. You know, it's kind of a wash there. So. And you get to go to the party. Yes. And they were doing these weird smoked hors d'oeuvres so this little smoke machine with smoke coming out of a tube and so they had these little hors d'oeuvres in a, a plastic cup with a lid they would take the lid off stick the smoke tube in there and fill it with smoke then put the lid on and hand it to you <laughs> gotta love it okay. <laughs> so you got to see them as they drew numbers and chose the art they wanted yes huh. yeah it was a ballroom and they had a little, um, in the middle against one wall, they had tables set up and had all the artwork facing in and had a couple of entrances into it. Same during the years that I did it. And I thought it was, I thought it was a great way to raise money. And, you know, I think all the artists that donated something, it wound up being, you know, they all got sales out of it eventually. Yep. Just like Boston Mills, even if you didn't have a great Friday night, the people come back because they pay, I don't know, $60 or something to get in. And they come back shopping and they pick up things that they saw on Friday night. So, all right, this is going to be tiresome. What? What? <laughs> talking to himself. Are no, you talking? 
He can't move now. <laughs> so Court, I've seen that you've got some good acceptances coming up. No. <laughs> I got I got in St. Louis and that's it. Okay. I've gotten in two shows so far this year and I've applied to six. Now I still have to hear from one. But Which I applied to places like Cherry Creek, Brookside, Plaza, St. Louis, and two local shows. Two smaller shows. But if you only apply to the top shows, your chances of getting in are much diminished. Oh, yeah. I knew that. I, I, knew know that. I also know my work needs, I need to overhaul my work and my jury images. It's time. Um, but I'm, I have a kind of a dilemma in that normally when I do this, I photograph different things. I start photographing uh, and showing different things. And I don't want to give up on the front porch project yet. So I'm got to think of something else here. So I'm kind of stuck, you know, because I think that the, just the porches in general are getting a little, are getting stale, even though I'm all, constantly adding new ones to it. So, do you think that that set of images is? I know it's different, but do you think that is jury friendly? Yes, what? Jury friendly, like uh, they, they, what the viewers will get it, like uh, we're just showing the four images that we show. Yeah, I think they are. Um, you know, and these a couple of couple of the images I've been using for a while and you know I've gotten in these well I've gotten in every show that I applied to I've gotten in with these images with the exception of Brookside so I just think you know every and this it's been longer than this because of COVID but every about every four years I need to go through and shake everything up and I usually totally change what I'm, what I'm hanging on the walls so well if you have ideas that's got to be kind of fun if you're kind of stuck that's hard yeah i um you know i have some ideas unfortunately what i want to do is extremely expensive um <laughs> figures and the money's not there to do it right now so um i am going to go look for some grants and some residencies and things like that um to try and do it so hi Teresa hi she's back she's back crisis so far averted what happened uh, a friend is uh hospitalized and there are issues you know how that goes oh yeah I know that one well. Yeah, well, I'm kind of in the middle of it, so I have to respond when I have to respond. Yep. Crystal, well, were, you, were you on the Zoom last Wednesday night? With the tents? About the tents? Yeah. Yeah, that was really helpful. And Bonnie, I did I, your tip of um, using my ratchet straps to secure the kettlebells around my seat okay. base so they don't kill me if I get in an accident. Good. And I also shifted the weight so that it's more, it's in between the wheels and I could feel a difference in the handling of the minivan when I was driving. Great. Yeah, I found that one really helpful. What's the next one going to be about? Um, we're going to talk about um, applying, the actual filling out the applications. Um, talk about arranging your jury images and what to fill out where in the uh, applications and, you know, talk about when you, they want those 100 characters, what to say, talk a little bit about booth shots. Oh, cool. So 
So hopefully, no rabbits. Oh, yeah. No, you're going to get a raccoon this time. Maybe you'll get a squirrel. We have raccoon baby will, raccoons. A raccoon will be more fun, especially one that's about three feet wide. <laughs> I don't, I have no idea how, the only thing I can think of is he brought it in here. But I didn't see him. He may have brought it in that night. He may have brought it in earlier in the day. I don't know. And the the rabbit must have been too terrified to move or make a sound. Yeah. It, you know, Gray would let, Gray had it by the back of the neck, and then Gray would let go and it kind of try and get somewhere where Gray couldn't get to it. And I took it outside and set it down, and it just sat there, and I was like, oh, no. And But when I came out, when we were done, it was gone. Good. That's because somebody had it for dinner? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then I I thought I lost the video um, because when you get done with the Zoom, it has to render the video and it takes a few minutes. And I wasn't thinking about that and I shut my computer down which ended up killing that. And, but today when I started, restarted my computer, it came up and asked me if I wanted to finish the video. And I told it, oh, yes. Nice. Thank goodness. Cause there was a lot of information in that one. Mm -hmm. I have, I'm going to ask, I had, when I was in Oklahoma City, I had a show director tell me that they do not allow trim lines. I'm sorry, they do not allow easy ups, not because if they come down easily, but the wind affects that style of roof differently than other kinds of tents. Ooh. And I had never heard that. Has anybody else ever heard that? No. I mean, well, it has a different profile than the others, but I'm trying to picture like the physics of the wind with it. it doesn't you know what, what it is? Um, the, the way that the, the tent is built, my client, Holly Kerrigan, so, was the only person that came to see me. So when the wind goes in, doesn't have anywhere to go, it just gets trapped inside the tent. And that's what it, it makes the, the the torque. If you look at the light dome and the train line, even without, even if you have the bends uh, close or you don't have the bends, when you go to the corners, especially with the train line, you always have like a little gap in the corner so the air goes out. Uh, the people from train line always tell you Regardless if it's raining or not, you should always leave the vents open. No, because to keep the heat out is to keep the wind flowing. Because that helps to the tent to stay down because the air has a place to go. Also, physics-wise, it will be like any car. It goes up and down, no, and just move like an airplane. So the air going like this. So it's keeping the tent down. While the other one, it goes up, doesn't have a, a the air doesn't have a, a, a regular flow. It's just creating a vortex like a tornado on top of it. If you start thinking about it, but but if if you look at all the tents that they use for weddings and big events, they all have a peaked top. Yeah, yeah. but. It's still, those are made out of steel and they are anchored really bad. And I'm going to tell you, I saw a couple of those come down in different art shows. The people said that they was not set up properly, but I see those things come down and the train must still be up. So it's it could be just an, I, I do believe that most of the time it's a, uh, it's in the person making an error. But 
I don't trust us then. It's just, you can tell the difference. It's just the way that the tent, the way it's built, the, the vinyl that gets used. Even though Exxon, the Exxon on uh, train lines, it still looks to me, it looks better, but it still looks more flexible. I don't like the idea that the bars are going like in an X shape so you can close it. Those also creates more tension with the, to, it's forcing more things instead than doing the opposite. But it's, that's just me thinking. Like I say, I could be totally, totally wrong. I just, um, a poor little guy walking the streets. <laughs> <laughs> with your cat. <laughs> yeah. I don't know anything. Yeah. You know what you need, Oscar? You what? need one of those uh, baby carriers that you wear in front for your cat so you can walk around with them all the time. Oh, Lord, no. <laughs> or use a backpack like I have with mine. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just flat out, no. <laughs> I love the picture of yours traveling in the passenger seat. Yeah, she she has gotten really good about it. It took her like one trip to learn because she's tethered in. She can't climb out. Right. Well, she can, but it's it's short enough to where she can just barely get out. And then I've got to pull over because you know she's half in, yeah. half out. It's just gonna be yeah. a nightmare. But she has finally learned that as long as she stays in the backpack, I will keep the little flap open while we're driving. I call it her window. And, you know, as soon as she jumps out, then she loses window privileges for a while. And I think she's finally gotten the hang of it. <laughs> Excellent. If you can train a cat to do anything, more power to you. <laughs> but Court, you, the, the meeting last week was actually, for me, it was the most helpful so far. And I, I did decide after that, that after this year, so for heading into next year, I'm going to go with the light dome. I love, 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 loved my light dome. Just loved it. The light you get through it, you know, they may have changed the material, but it always gave me good light. Oh, good. And yeah, I feel that it weighs less than the trim line. And yeah. very stable. Very. Get the stabilizer bars. Oh, absolutely. Well, You'll I mean, have to yeah, for her, her to. mesh walls. For my mesh walls, well, yeah. The other oh, thing that's about right. the, the mesh walls, do you remember that one um, photo I showed where they had the X bracing on it? Yeah. Your mesh walls kind of do the same thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because they're bracing it to keep it um, rectangular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I do plan on keeping them. I really like them, so I'm not going to go with pro panels. Oh, don't. Not with your work. Your work is kind of light and airy feeling, mm -hmm. especially all the glass and water parts. And I think the mesh panels just work so beautifully with those. Oh, good. Thanks for the feedback. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing. Uh, there's some promoters that if you have mesh match wall, they want to put you in corners. Just to let you know. They want to what? They want to put you in corners. They want to, They will not let you have a corner. Oh, that's not a big deal to me, so that's okay. Yeah, but it will be someday. Just yeah. That's a problem for the future. I've got enough to worry about right now. Yeah. Oh, come on. You have to plan for the future now. <laughs> future Crystal will deal with or, that. Or if you get into, you know, there's some shows like St. Louis that um, everybody has a corner. They set up, yeah. in, they set up in what they call quads. Um, so there's room 
behind the tents, but they put four tents together, two facing two facing different directions. Um, so everybody has an outside wall. And I did a sh another show that the first show I ever did that had a quad set up is they it was really weird set up in that they put all the booths facing a different direction. Ugh. That's almost like a pinwheel. Uh, yeah. Yes, you had a booth front and a booth side on each of the four sides. We did a show like that, and it worked really well where we were. It was very flat, and um, people liked the idea of meandering. Um, and things were clearly marked. Yeah, the the problem with that, and it's like Oklahoma City, where you have a you have artists on all four sides instead of just two. It uh, it's a real how do you walk the show easily? You know, because you've got artists that aren't facing out. You know, the walkways. So that would be an issue. But the way St. Louis does it, so you have four booths, two face one way, two face the opposite direction. I think works really well. Yeah. I think that's what Ann Arbor does, doesn't it? Anybody know? Which, which show? Uh, Summer Art Fair. Oh. Ann Arbor. They do corners, like quad corners for the main street. I don't know about the I don't know about the State Street or or the or regional. But regional, I know for, Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, um the original lines all the tents up in like an capital I, but then it's like I think every four tents there's a space, which I think qualifies as a corner for people at those, but but they're definitely not in groups of four or, you know, in a right. square or anything like that. Yeah. yeah um, a show I do in Tulsa is like that. It's like um, every four tenths. I think yeah, it is about like every four tenths, maybe five tenths. They put a break in there so that they can um, you know, get additional corners in. Plaza does that, but they only do it like in a block. They'll do it once in the middle of the block and that's it. Well, I know in Ann Arbor, that break has to be big enough for a fire engine to get through. Yes, I just got all the information from there and they were talking about that and like certain booths can't have awnings because of the fire thing yeah. and they're really strict about it. <clears throat> making you know making you bring the proof that your tent is you know fire resistant and all that sort of thing yeah hey. st louis told us we couldn't have awnings out front on one side the first year i did st louis they said okay if you're in this this side of the street and this group of booths you can't have an awning up out front Well, I think it was Ann Arbor, maybe a different, oh, maybe Madison, where at certain times of the day, you could have an awning, everybody on that side of the street, and then we switched at a certain hour, and we took our awnings down, and the other side of the street could put theirs up. It was weird, but it actually worked very well. Well, if, depending upon which time. way your booth faces, that'd work pretty good because you only really need it half the day. Yep. And mine, it was, I was on the sunny side in the morning, and that's when I got to use my awning. 
So I was happy camper. <laughs> so what does everybody have coming up? I got a lousy old town. You've got what? Lousy old town. <laughs> oh, no wonder I didn't recognize the name. <laughs> Do you really think it's going to be lousy? No, I just prepare myself just in case something goes disappointing again. It better damn go really well. It should be my best show ever. I'm pretty sure it's going to be my best show ever, and I'm not going to be able to say anything to anybody. Okay. <laughs> Keep my mouth shut. You'll be, unhappy. You'll be but, unhappy because you don't have anything to complain about, right? No, it, it will be because I, I could come out to be getting ready for for Lincoln, Nebraska, and I only have three days to get everything done. Maybe what less. All, oh, sorry. What? what do you all think about Omaha calling it quits? Did anybody do it? I did it once, and it's a really good show. The things like I always keep getting... Since I start flying, I, it's kind of funny. It's going to happen. Now that that show's not happening, I don't get to all time because all my was to back up all the time. So I will get to both shows and I will do all time because it's still a local one, right? Right. So, but I, and then I have the money to put the show. Then I have the money, you know? And yeah. Well, and they then, need better sponsors. It's no, I don't know if those people, I don't know, the, I don't know. Do you would think with PayPal being there with all those big corporations in there that they would be able to get money, but. The longtime director is retiring and that probably has something to do with it, I would think. Court, have yeah. you done it? No, I thought about it, but I never did it. Mark and Wendy Sasuke does it all the time. And I they, know. That, that, that really, it's going to suck for them. Yeah. Because so. they've been diehard there. Oscar, you're in Chicago, right? Yeah. Um, what can you tell me anything about art fair on the square in Lake Forest? I do it. It's uh, they're a little bit stuck up. <laughs> They buy art. It's a compared to any other show. By the time you get to that point, to that show, it's well attended for the type of show it is. But it's not attended as if you've been doing a bunch of shows in the summer and then you do that show, you're going to feel like a, there's nobody there. I um, that's the first thing. People buy what they like. You don't have to worry about pricing because they have the money uh, and it's a conservative area I think uh, uh, I kind of my friends that does astra painting with it's more decorative they usually do really well in there uh, Jana Epson does really well in there and uh it's uh, Michael Bear. Mike Bear is a photographer. Does I think that he's one of probably the best landscape photographer in the Archer circuit. Uh, he does really well in there. Okay. I, I don't do. I oh, go ahead. I don't do ridiculous well in there, but I, I do good enough for a local show. Okay. But keep this in mind, I don't do well in Chicago. Chicago oh, really? is not a market for me. I, as crazy as that sounds. 
Yeah. Crystal, can you see the painting behind me? Yes, I can. That's okay. really cool. That's why. Thank you. I dearly love it. Um, that artist, I believe, does that show. Oh, okay. So I'm doing that one this year. Just don't know, didn't know what to expect. Good. I will see you there. Oh, good. Oh, you know what? I also had a question. You know how St. James has four different ones? Yes. Like three different ones? Okay, I got into one of them, and I just want to make sure it's not really bad. Let me see. Okay. It doesn't start with the B, you're fine. Oh, the Belgravia one? Yeah. No, I, yeah. Got in, I got into Fourth Street and then was waitlisted for the court and for third. Fourth should be fine. Okay. Yeah. And I'll just let go of the other wait list. Thank you. Besides, if you get to the main one, they will put you in the in, in the inner core and you might not get the same traffic than everybody else. Oh, okay. So yeah. Just do the fourth. Okay, cool. Thank you. But that's just me, you know. Like I say. I'm just, it's a, just a guy walking the streets. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oh, geez. Hey, you know, who, do you know whose fault is that comment coming from? That you watch Morning Joe? Occasion. Okay, so you, you know uh, what Joe says? I'm just a country lawyer. Ah. Uh, <laughs> got it. You know. I just a country lawyer that doesn't know anything about law. So it's just funny. Well, I am going to leave you all. This has been lovely. But I'm gonna head out also. It's oh, hard. Well, Crystal, best of luck at Kalamazoo. Thank you. Are you gonna be visiting? Fingers crossed. I hope to be. Okay. I'll look for you. Okay. Great. But sell it all. Yes. <laughs> okay. See you all later. Okay. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye. I think I'm going to head out too. I've got to get some work done. Oh, here we go. Everybody's leaving. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> hey, at least don't we can stop to record this week. Yeah, that's true. Yep. <laughs> All right. Okay. There was no screaming or yelling either. <laughs> no controversy. <laughs> yep. Yep. So where's right. Mr. Controversial? Barry. <laughs> uh, he should be coming back from a show. So he was doing a show this weekend. So maybe next week. All right. Okay, I'll see you guys next week. Be All good. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye.